Hi, I'm Ken Nichols. I'm a member of the North Madison Congregational Church. And one of my many hobbies in retirements is berries. I love raspberries. I love strawberries. So I am growing both. All of my plants are ever bearing. They will produce uh, for strawberries in June and September, for raspberries in July and in October. Now right here are black raspberries. You can say black, they look red. Yeah, but you see, they start off with very pink, very pale green, then gradually they change color until they fully ripen when they are black. But none of these, even this one, is not yet ripe. It's not July yet. <laughs> so anyway, these are all black raspberries in various stages of, of ripening. And because my backyard is so wet, I grow everything in containers. As we come around the corner, these are my strawberries. And July is, is coming. June is the major time for strawberries, June and September. We picked nine quarts of strawberries already, but our June crop is just about done. Uh, they overgrow each other very quickly and very easily. I want to show you, for those who don't know, this is how a strawberry plant expands. It's called a runner, and at the end, that will be a new plant. It will set out its own roots. I snipped it off because I have a space problem here. So I have to snip off these runners, otherwise they'll choke themselves out. And as you see, it is, they're overcrowded. So I have to snip off more runners. But that's how strawberry plants uh, will expand. You can start off with 10 or 20 plants and you'll end up with 200 very quickly. So this is what I started with, 20 plants. I've also given some away. Okay, uh, beyond these tubs, we have some window boxes with strawberries again. As I said, these strawberries produced nine quarts so far this year, and we'll have another crop in September. All of the, the plants in these window boxes came out of a couple of these tubs just started again this year. I hope that they will winter over. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. All of these wintered over very well. By winter over, I mean surviving the cold weather and the frost. This particular variety of strawberries is called Fort Laramie, and they need a minimum of mulch to survive the winter. These are not the kind of berries that you normally find in Florida. This is, these are better equipped to handle a colder winter further north, which is why I chose these. Now you notice that in these tubs, I didn't fill them up to the top. That's, that's intentional. You'll see some dead leaves in there. I have a very easy, lazy way of mulching for the winter. It's called maple trees. The wind blows the leaves from the trees and right into my tubs. So I did not have to do any special work to mulch anything for this winter because the wind and the trees and the leaves took care of it. And that's why these tubs are not filled to the top. It's also less expensive or less labor when I don't have to fill them all the way to the top. Because I have problems in my lower back. As you can see, I'm standing up straight is not easy for me. Now this black hose, we have to water, serves a double purpose. One, to provide water for my plants, but also it's a deterrent for the birds. I keep moving it, it's never in the, it doesn't stay in the same spot all season long. And what happens is that the birds think it's a snake. So it's been very effective. I've not had bird damage to speak of at all last year. I do have a little bit of damage here and there, but not not significant. So I keep moving the hose and I think that's that's helpful. Also in deterrence, 
can you pick up a picture of the eagle, uh, of the, the owl rather? my bird deterrent and what I did was to set them up birds are smart Michael tell you that however to fool the birds my owl moves so he's not the same angle looking at the same spots all the time with a shaft down through here uh, the wind will not blow him off and so far he's doing a good job now I showed you how strawberries will expand and produce new plants. Raspberries do not do that. Instead, raspberries will send up suckers next to the main plant, or you can snip a piece and put it in soil with a hormone uh, substance added on to heal it and to stimulate new growth. Well. Here are new raspberry plants coming along. I just did these a couple months ago, so I don't expect any berries from them this year, but I will possibly in the fall, but definitely next year. I will have 15 new raspberry bushes, red raspberries, next year, all coming off of the efforts that I've, I've made to start new ones. And there's more red raspberries here. These were some of my best producers last year. And these plants, I started. You're getting close to being ripe. I stepped on that plastic. See, these are not quite red yet, not quite ripe yet. But again, they start off with that pale green. We've been short of rain, so some of these are, are not where they should be. This one might be here, here, here's a red raspberry. <laughs> How's the flavor? Mmm, delicious, so sweet. My dream is to produce so many of these that we have to freeze them. So we'll have our own red raspberries in January and February. Blacks have a great taste too. Uh, the black raspberries are a little more difficult to handle. They're closer to being their, their bramble heritage. And you have to snip them back, uh, pinch the ends so they don't go too far. And some of those around the corner are, well, I'm just learning, let's put it that way. Uh, lots, of, lots of things to learn. Now here are two more strawberries. Again, too many new runners and too many new plants in there. So I have to do a lot of thinning so that I'll get strawberries next year. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have any questions so far as the, the berries are concerned? This is my number one, number one priority is, is the raspberries and the strawberries. So you said you got into this after retirement? Yes. Yeah. And, and what inspired you? Like, why did you choose berries? Uh, it's something I've, I've always loved raspberries and strawberries too. Um, we had strawberries when I was a kid. Uh, and then we had some strawberries over in a place we lived in Massachusetts. But for the last oh, many years, we had no, no berries growing at all. But we retired in 07, purchased this place in, in Middletown, only one third of an acre. It's the smallest house lot we've had, but there's some space here that can be used. You see by my hat, I'm also a woodworker. Oh yeah. And this red building is the one that houses my, my woodworking efforts. Uh -huh. I build some furniture and some small stuff too. So that's a, another hobby that I can do when we've got snow on the ground. And of course music, for those who know me at North Madison, music is very important for me as well. Ooh. So what are, um, what are some of the things that you guys make with the berries? Do you do jams? Uh, we have not had enough for that. Okay. We're eating them fresh. 
Oh, nothing uh, like fresh berries. My favorite dessert is ice cream with berries. Mm. Uh, <laughs> nine quarts of strawberries, a few of them went into the freezer, but not much. Wow. Found a new recipe though. Yeah? Where it's a strawberry shortcake made in a skillet using buttermilk, strawberries, and you all you have to do is add whipped cream. <laughs> you got it. Yum. <laughs> uh, we haven't tried it yet, but we're we're planning to do that. So right now it's all the berries, we're basically eating them as they come through. Beautiful. With strawberries and raspberries for dessert every single night. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a That's real fair. Wonderful. Yeah. What a treat. Mm -hmm. The fruits of your labor. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And yeah. with a small piece of land, this is one of the things we can do with it. Mm hmm It's not going to be um, well I was gonna say not time consuming. It is time consuming. Mm -hmm. But it's not not something that requires a huge number of hours. Yeah. Once you do the pruning and the fertilizing, it's watering and picking. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm learning. Let's put it this way: don't mm -hmm. don't see me as an expert, because <laughs> uh, next year is going to be better. Yep. That's that's our aim, and, and with with what I've learned so far, trial and error, some yeah. things work and some things don't. So with the new red raspberry bushes, you know, all I did was kind of a pail from. Home Depot and some potting soil and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can generate more uh, raspberry plants quite easily given the techniques I've already mastered. So it looks good. And by the way, these all came out of the raspberry bushes right here. They're the parent of all of these. How many do we have? Two and three is five, eight. There's nine of them here. Nine new ones that came out of these. Wow, all this year. Yep. Wow. Matter of fact, actually, just those two bushes produced all nine of them. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be taking some more out of it as it start thinning and pruning. Mm hmm So I, I intend to have 15 new red raspberry bushes next year. Wow. Wow. This is so great. It's such a great way to um, get you outside. You know, mm -hmm. that's the great thing about gardening. It gets you outside. It doesn't require a lot of space. Right. It doesn't require a lot of investment. Each of these bushes would cost about $20 or so, maybe 25 depending on where you buy them. Right. Well, I figure out if I can get a bush that I really like, I take clones from, right. from that one if it's, it's, it's yeah. really productive. Yeah. So it, uh, and I love, I love your willingness to keep learning. I mean, you never stop learning, no matter how old you are, right? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. In well, the garden. Well, as a kid, I was always curious. Uh-huh, yeah. How, how do things work? And at age eight, my parents bought an encyclopedia. And when I would ask a question, my mom would say, go look it up. <laughs> go look it up. So I started reading an encyclopedia at age eight, nine years old uh, for fun learned a lot that way uh, but with the raspberries it's uh, trial and error learning by doing and uh, I grew up on a farm so raising things has um, been in my blood this place is too small for any animals but it's perfect for some raspberries yeah and strawberries yep yep well I want to thank you so much for sharing your berry patch with us and your knowledge and uh and your sweet your sweetness your sweet berries thank you ken you're welcome glad to be part of it i like the project you're doing this is great <laughs> thanks it's great to great to be out in the garden on tuesdays it's great to be out in the garden every day <laughs> mm -hmm. not only this it, it helps people to realize that food doesn't just come from a store we can raise some of it ourselves yes you can't get any fresher than that if you pick and eat yes and that's so important strawberries and raspberries are two of those that are very frail very fragile and yeah. uh, the season is short but you can enjoy them fresher than anywhere else yeah so enjoy thank you beautiful oh.